Yeah, I'm going li I'm live. Five yeah, seconds the remaining. Yeah, that. Still. Still Reserve like time. But share the page. You share the link. <clears throat> like, they'll do all that. Just close the door, make sure nobody else. How many people are there? Ah. Super. Okay, ready? Good luck, good luck. Ten seconds remaining. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. You go to YouTube, check. Trade on a show, bro. Let's go ahead and log on. What are you sharing? Just check it. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we have a game between Sigma 5 and a team which whose name I have forgot. So my colleague says that the team's name is I Can Only Dream. So, let's see the match, shall we? For now, I am going to introduce the players. We've got the Kunka being played by Seven. We've got the Clockwork being played by Zap. The Faceless Void playing by Devil Mystery on the Disruptor. We have Nub on the Invoker. On the side of Sigma 5, we have Night Stalker being played by Poop Research Officer. We have Warlock being played by Boyka. We have Dante. On the Phantom Assassin, we've got the Magnus being played by Zergos. And we see a smoke coming out from Sigma 5. They are going for a warding spree. They have already placed a ward in the Radiant High Ground. And it seems as though, in return, the Kunka is also going to place a High, a high Ground ward. And a Radiant ward near the top rune for Sigma 5. The Magnus does have a sentry and an observer. He probably wants to go and then block these creep camps and make life easier for himself down in the bottom lane. So if you're going to look at the lanes we have, the Invoker is probably going to go up against the Puck, a really classic matchup. 30 seconds to battle! 
I think it's going to be a safe lane boy uh, on the side of In Your Dream and Sigma 5 have a Phantom Assassin going safe lane. I don't think that a Faceless Void can outcarry a Phantom Assassin early on. Wow. She deals too much damage. But let's see how the game goes. The game is about to start in 5 seconds. It does not seem like the rune battles are going the to happen. Battle begins. They are probably going to go passive. The rune is going to be picked up by the invoker. And yeah, going up against the puck. It seems as though Sigma 5 are going for a tri lane up top. The Phantom Assassin being supported by both the Night Stalker and the Warlock. Meanwhile, in the bottom lane, it seems as though the Magnus is going to solo versus a Faceless Boy and a Kunka. A really odd matchup, but it seems as though the Destructor coming in to support them will synergize that well and make life easier for the Faceless Boy. <laughs> Does not seem like any lane is going as surprising as I would I would have thought. It's all going passive. The Phantom Assassin is getting his farm. The Face of Swoid is also getting his farm. It seems as though the action, if at all, is supposed to happen in the game, it is going to happen in the mid lane. If we already see a rotation coming up from the Kunka. The Kunka is going to get spotted out by the puck. He is in the high ground, but the Kunka is scouting out the the puck and probably trying to bully him out of the lane. He is getting kind of low comparatively to the invoker. The clockwork is probably going to have a much easier lane for a offlaner compared to how the Magnus is going to have. He's already getting surrounded by the Disruptor and the Faceless Void. They are going to deal a decent amount of damage and try to bully him out of the lane. The Magnus does have skewers, so the Faceless Void is getting a bit paranoid. And the Kunka goes deep inside of the dire jungle and secures the bounty room. Bounty! Mine! So the Magnus won't be able to get any source of reliable gold in his lane. But then again, it does not seem like he's doing as bad as I thought he might have been doing. The Shockwave spam is doing its thing. He is securing one last hit per creep wave. The Kunka is rotating in, but he is going to get skewered back into the tier 1. The tier 1 is going to do a lot of damage, but he is going to survive. The skewer not being enough to get the kill onto the Kunka. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, it seems as though the Invoker has the slight edge over the Puck. He has 13 last hits and 7 denies, comparatively to the Puck, who has 12 last hits and 3 denies. The Alacrity coming in really good for the Invoker. Oh, bounty! It seems as though the top lane, the Night Stalker has permanently camped there. The Stifling Dagger spam from the Phantom Assassin will not be able to do no. a considerable amount of damage, but it is damaged still, and the Clockwork is probably going to leave the lane once he knows that it is going to be unsafe for him. The Radiant Courier has not been upgraded yet, comparatively to the Radiant, the Dire Courier, which has already been upgraded. It does not seem like In Your Dreams is playing as seriously as I thought they might have been playing. But then again, they are known to troll, and they produce a lot of results, so... Who am I to talk huh? The Magnus has gone back to his base. It seems as though the pressure from the bottom lane is not going to be as easy as he would have thought. The Night Stalker is getting a little bit aggressive onto the Clockwork, but the Cog is going to burn a lot of mana, and the Clockwork is going to be perfectly fine. The bottom lane, it seems as though the Magnus is probably going to get surrounded by the Kutka and the Disruptor is going be. The Skewer coming in for the Magnus, but and next onto the Magnus and a Torrent is going to deal a considerable amount of damage, but the Faceless Void is getting quite low. A salve being popped up from the face of the spoil and he is going to be fine. He does not need to go back to base. The Mountain Room being picked up by the Clockwork, which was trying to get contested by the Night Stalker. The Night Stalker is hasted, mind you. Maybe they want to go for the Invoker. The Invoker is going to get canned. 
a void and a bunch of blasters. Okay, they killed Raindrop, it's working its magic, but the Roger is going to go down and full research. Officer is going to secure first blood, but it seems that it's not going to come at an easy price. The Night Stalker is getting a bit low under the tier 1 of the Radiant, but he will be able to escape since he's a Night Stalker and it is night time. The Faceless Void, meanwhile, in the bottom lane, Magnus is getting really low, he does not have a lot of mana. The Torrent is probably not going to catch it, he does have a mango. But he won't be able to turn up. Sunstrike coming in and not getting a kill on the invoker. Really well played. That, uh, that offsets the feat that he just did in the mid lane. Getting first blood for Team Sigma 5. The hard camp is going to get stacked by the Warlock. Probably made so the Puck or the Magnus can take that with their power. The Faceless Void seems to be doing well. He does not have his power to set comparatively to the mid lane. It seems a little fight is going to break out. The buck is getting really low. The Thunderstrike is going to do a lot of damage. But he will be able to survive. And the Dream Coil is making sure that the Invoker is locked down. The Invoker is probably going to go down. And the Night Stalker is trying to escape the Thunderstrike onto the Night Stalker. But a next one to Joran is going to make sure that he is locked down. And he goes down. The buck is good. Really An illusory or to try to secure a kill onto the disruptor is not going to work out and he is going to resume his laning stage. The Magnus is close to completing his arcade boost. He has gone for, Gold for my quite a few utility items like the stout shield and the glowing blade. So Double that's not damage. going to be anytime soon. But the invoker is looking to complete a magic wand. He does not want to go for a Midas first. It seems as though the spam from the Puck is getting on his nerves. The Puck has a bottle and two Null Talismans, probably going to build it into a Veil of Discord. A rotation coming onto the top lane. The Warlock placing a ward near the tier 1 top. Securing last its and rotations. Okay, the Faceless Void is getting really low. He is probably not going to go down. He is going to time walk into the tree line and the kinetic field from the Disruptor seeing the Faceless Void. Really well played by the Disruptor. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, it does not seem like the Invoker is having the advantage that he was enjoying in the early game. The Puck is... The Puck really hits hard and he has maxed out his Illusory Orb, so it is going to be a pain in the ass for the Invoker. The Night Stalker though, the Night Cycle is going to end soon enough. Maybe he wants to go for a kill onto the mid lane. In your dreams does not have a lot of Observer Wards scouting it out. A void onto a Dream Coil on Silence is going to secure, probably going to secure the kill onto the Invoker and the Invoker goes down but secures that kill. And the Night Stalker is going to use a Hunter in the Night and escape out of the Cogs. What a good pick versus a Clockwork. They are going to spot out the Kunta. But they are probably not going to go for him. the X mark onto the puck, maybe. No, the puck teleports away and he will be perfectly fine. The power is doing a lot of damage onto the Faceless Boy. The Faceless Boy does not want to come in for the kill. He does not have his Chronosphere yet. Mine. A prize. The Puck seems to be one level ahead of the Invoker. He is level 8 while the Invoker is level 7. The Puck does have a haste rune. He is going to deal a decent amount of damage. Just one right click and he is going to back off. Does not seem like the Clockwork will be doing really well in the top lane. He has completed his Tranquil Boots. That is pretty surprising. I thought he was not playing well. But both Caster's Curse. Boom, there it goes. Um, he is trying to go for a magic wand also to counter the stifling dagger spam from the Phantom Assassin. Meanwhile, in the bottom lane, it seems like the Magnus is trying to be Radiance out, Middle Tower is under out attack. The at the last moment. The face of Void will have his Chronosphere, so no, he has his Chronosphere. He is in the Chronosphere. The kinetic field is probably going to secure the kill with Sunstrike. Secures the kill. Now taking another kill from long range with Sunstrike. A TPing into the bottom lane. 
the Night Stalker and the Puck, but they will not be able to save the Magnus and the Faceless Void is going to resume farming up. He is directly under the Observer Ward from Sigma 5 though. Phantom Assassin really low, but the heals coming in from the Warlock is helping him out. The Clockwork is getting really low, so he might just die to Phantom Assassin. A blink on him, he dies. The Sunstrike is going to get the Phantom Assassin really low, but the tower misses that he survives with skin still stuck to his bones. No, no. It does not seem like the Magnus is having a really good time. Faceless Void is doing a lot of damage to Magnus and with the bottle being purchased from the Magnus, he Illusion. does not seem like he will be proceeding with his item build anytime soon. The Phantom Assassin has her face boots and a Blightstone, so it should already be her for whoever comes to the offlane for the team Radiant. Fuck Solutions, counting out the supports from In Your Dream. And a failed hookshot onto the Fuck. The Fuck is going to get Tex and Torrent and is going to kill now. The Clockwork is going to take that kill, a really good play from the Radiant side. The Faceless Void is going to deal a decent amount of damage. He does not have Chronosphere yet. 30 seconds left on the Chronosphere. And meanwhile, in the top lane, the stack Dyer's is going to get tower up by is the under attack. of Sigma 5. The Invoker is going for a Hand of Midas right now. He has completed his boots, and he has the Gloves of Haste. He has gone for two Null Talismans, perhaps to deal more damage to the Buck, and the Invoker gets a Sunstrike kill onto the Magnus again, the Chronosphere working out really well, the X and the Torrent combo is not going to connect, but that is not going to matter, since the Magnus is already dead. In your dreams, looking really strong in his fights. The Phantom Assassin is going to go for the Middle Tower is under the attack. So, a gift from the Tempest of Battle. The Puck has completed his Veil of Discord, so. The team fights which are going to happen from now on in your dream has to be really careful X and Torrent coming on to the Magnus and the Magnus is probably going to try to skewer away. Okay, maybe not. He is just going to walk back to his tower. The Sunstrike is going to miss. Invoker is completely out of mana. Maybe they want to take the shrine. A rotation coming onto the mid lane. The Night Stalker is looking to get a kill onto the Invoker. They do spot out the Disruptor. So the Night Stalker has his eyes set on another prey. They spot out the Clockwork, maybe they want to get a kill on the Clockwork. Three heroes rotating into the mid lane and next onto the Puck. But a Dream Coil, but the Static Storm is going to silence the Puck long enough to get a kill, maybe? No, maybe not. The Puck is going to survive and the Warlock is going to go down. A Mean Hole being dropped up by the Invoker and the Puck is getting really low, but the Thunder Strike is probably going to secure the kill. The Phantom Assassin is going to use the Cypher Dagger to get the vision and get a kill onto the Disruptor. The good guy is also probably going to fall down. And he goes down. It's a double kill for Dante on the Phantom Assassin. And the mid tower is probably going to go down. The top shrine is going to get used by Sigma 5. Dyer's top tower is under attack. The Magnus is pushing down the bottom lane. The Faceless Void does have Chronosphere. Maybe they want to go for a kill. The Chronosphere is probably going to get committed. Maybe not the Thunderstrike. Probably onto the Glimpse. A Skewer onto the Magnus. The Magnus is going to get Glimpse back. He's going to try to get an RP, but he is going to go down. He will not place that RP onto the fight. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, the Puck 
is probably not going to go down. The Dream Call onto the Invoker and the Kunka is going to get him really low. The Invoker is going to drop. The Cox is trapping both the Night Stalker and the Phantom Assassin. The Phantom Assassin is looking really tanky, but the magic damage done by the Faceless Boy is going to secure the kill. The Puck is still in dangerous waters, but he is probably going to survive. The Cogs are not enough to catch him. The Warlock is farming up top. He has an Arcane Boot. Probably going for the Axe Refresher build, or maybe he wants to complete his Guardian Priest first. The bottom lane, it seems as though the Magnus will not be able to get his Blink Dagger anytime soon, since the Faceless Void just had a kill on the Radiance bottom tower is under attack. The Faceless Void, so having completed his Vladimir's, is looking really strong. He is going to give up a Yasha on his quick buy. The Night Stalker rotating into the bottom lane. Maybe they want to get a kill onto the Disruptor or the Faceless Void. A Void and a Silence onto the Disruptor. The Disruptor is getting really low and is probably going to go down. The Night Stalker is going to get that kill. And Sigma 5 making the plays right there. Ganking all over the map with the Night Stalker and his advantage over the Knight. The Hunter in the Knight is going to spot out the Faceless Void. He is going to get silenced, but he will probably not going to die since he TPs away. And nobody at that moment of time had a stun to stop that TP. The Invoker is trying to go for a push onto the mid lane. He has completed his hand of minus and Radiant structures have been fortified. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. And the Phantom Assassin is going to go down. The Invoker is going to help with that kill by using the Sunstrike. The bottom lane is going to go down. The X and Torrent and Boot combo onto the Warlock is probably going to secure that kill. An RP onto two. The Warlock is still not dead yet. The Warlock has been the X and he is going to go down. Zap with the double kill. The Night Stalker is probably going to get a kill onto the Clockwork. Maybe not. The Night Stalker is trying to retreat. An X on Torrent onto the Night Stalker and he is going to get mauled by the Beast Void. He is getting really low. The Kinetic Field is going to make sure the Night Stalker will not be able to keep you away. A Sunstrike and Faceless Void is going to secure, probably going to secure a kill onto the Faceless Void. Glimpse back onto the safe spot. It does not seem like the Disruptor is working really well with his glimpses. The Phantom Assassin TPs from the bottom lane and gets a kill onto the Disruptor. The Puck having completed his Blink Dagger sees him untouchable. The Invoker looking really strong. He is going to complete his hand, his Agonim Scepter, sometime soon. The Phantom Assassin is trying to complete her Desolator. She is about a thousand five hundred gold away from that, and she'll probably finish it by the next few minutes. The Kunka looking really weak with the Arcane Boots build. He has not completed his Peter Lens yet, so he will not be able to cast as much as you think he would. The Faceless Void, on the other hand, has completed his Yasha. He is going to go for a Manta style. He is going to get the Diffusal later. The Night Stalker has Face Boots and is going for a Solar Crest. Okay, that is probably a really good item choice. It is going to help the Phantom Assassin get more evasion. The Phantom Assassin already being a pain in the ass, being able to ev evade a lot of attacks from the side of Team Radiant. Plus the Solar Crest buff is going to make sure that the Phantom Assassin is going to stay alive in the fight longer than he should. The Dyer's poor top tower. The Invoker is going to swarm the Ancients with the people. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. Radiant structures are fortified. Dyer's structures are fortified against all comers. Dyer's the mid tower is probably going to fall down, but the puck is going to escape the illusory orb. The Illusion or plays working off for him, but meanwhile, in the top lane, the Clockwork is going to get a hook onto the Magnus. 
The Magnus is going to go around to face this boy. And it seems like the Night Stalker is soon to follow. Two TPs onto the top lane. The Puck and the Warlock. The Warlock's Rock is going to miss. The Faceless Void is going to survive. He is going to TP away. And the Clockwork also relatively safe. It seems as though the Disruptor has rotated to the top lane to get a kill onto. The Puck, the Puck is probably going to go down. The Static Storm and the Kinetic Field is going to secure the kill. The Sunstrike dealing the damage. And 7 on the Kunta is going to secure the last hit with the boat. Fatal Bonds on to two heroes, but that is not probably not going to do a lot of damage. The Bobwork is really tanky, he is going to survive. Meanwhile, the bottom lane, the Phantom Assassin is going to complete his Desolator soon enough. He just needs a hundred more gold. The man has meanwhile has, is, under attack. is going to complete his Blink Dagger with this Creep Wave. Party it up, bucko! Dyer's top tower has fallen. The top tower has this gone down. Faceless Void take that. He is going to go for his hand of might as he has like he has purchased the recipe for his Manta Stout first, and not going for an illusory or And I am right back. Sorry for the technical difficulties. It seems as though we are currently understaffed. And let's get right back into the game. The faces void seems to have. As I was saying, he has purchased the recipe for the Manta Style first. He is not even going to keep that in his backpack. That is probably a really bad play. But who am I to say if they did the game, huh? The Buck is looking really strong. He is really close to his Zeal Scepter. Once he gets his Zeal Scepter, I do not think that anybody from the Radiant side will be able to get a kill on the Buck unless a Kronos here is going to get committed. Push coming on onto the bottom lane. Four heroes from In Your Dreams trying to get a fight over there. A five man rotation from Team Sigma 5. They do spot out the Kunka, the darkness being popped. The, the Dream Coil, the Sans, and Illusory Orb is going to lock down the Kunka. The Kunka's kill is going to be given to the Phantom Assassin. 
The Glimmer Cave from the Disruptor is going to make sure that he is going to survive for now. He is going to hide in the tree line. And Team Sigma Phi looking really daunting in this team fight. And a push is going to resume into the bottom main. Meanwhile, the TP from the Phantom Sassage, she is going to TP top and probably trying to harass the Invoker out of the lane. The Invoker is going to ghost walk out and is going to be perfectly fine. Bottom tower. Radiance Bottom Tower is under attack. The Warlock seems to be going for a Force Staff, okay? The Buck is going to complete the Yule Scepter soon enough. The Blink Dagger on the Magnus probably going for a Force Staff himself versus a Clockwork. Getting as many Force Staffs as you can is the solution. The top lane, it seems as though Faceless Void is going to get spotted out by the Phantom Assassin. The Phantom Assassin is trying to go for a kill. A Chronosphere onto the Phantom Assassin, but the Sunstrike is going to deal a lot of damage. The Phantom Assassin is really tanky though with the evasion coming in. The X onto the Clockwork and the Torrent is probably going to miss. The Hookshot is also going to miss on the Phantom Assassin. The Phantom Assassin is looking really strong. But he is going to blink to the Night Stalker and he is going to be perfectly fine. Lotus Orb on the Clockwork. He's going to use it on the Faceless Boy. The Faceless Boy will not be able to use a lot of skills. The Phantom Assassin, oh my god, turns around and gets a kill onto the Disruptor. People from Team Radiant are looking really low with the Rock being dropped and the Fatal Bonds. The Clockwork is also getting really low, but the Faceless Boy W is making sure that Puck does not go ahead. The RP on the 4! And they are going to get secured back, and the silence from the Puck is going to make sure that they are going to drop down. The Invoker is looking really low, he does swap back, but the Warlock's DPS is probably not going to take them down. Okay, Invoker is going to survive the sliver of his HP, 50 HP to be exact. That was a really close fight, it would have turned into a disaster if the Invoker had died, but he managed to survive. <laughs> the Invoker is having completed his Yule Scepter is looking really strong. He will be able to purge out the silence from the Puck and the Night Stalker with that. <laughs> That was a failed stack from the Magnus, but well, it won't matter since In Your Dream is not looking really good. Sigma 5 is dominating. The Phantom Assassin pick is making wonders for them. The BKB is going to get queued up by the Phantom Assassin. Meanwhile, in the bottom lane, the Disruptor is trying to stray too far. He has a Glimmer Cape. Maybe he will survive, but three heroes in the bottom lane. Okay, two heroes in the bottom lane. The Magnus is not going to go for the Disruptor, he is going to settle for the Creep Day, which is going to come in. The Empower playing a vital role in making sure that him and his cores are going to get a lot of harm. The Magnus having completed his BKB is looking really strong. A five man rotation coming in from the top lane. Smoke dub. It seems like in your dream want to go for a fight. They want to upset the lead that Sigma 5 have. Smoke is going to break from both sides. The Magnus is going to break the smoke of the Disruptor and the Disruptor, vice versa. The Buck is going to find a silence on the two. 
The dream ball on the Gunka, but the static storm is going to make sure that the puck will not be able to escape, and the puck goes down. They go for securing the kill with the meatball. The nice stroker is going to get used up, and the chronosphere is going to catch him at the edge. The BKB Magnus will not be able to do much, and RP on to do. Okay, that is really good, but then again, there is no follow up on side of Team Sigma. And the Warlock is probably also going to go down the face as well. He is trying to get a juke, but is not will not be able to do it since he is slowed by time dilation. The Magnus is safe in the tree lines. He has a TP, so he is probably going to TP home. In your dreams, looking really strong for that fight. There is part of the Magnus farming in the mid lane. And Roche is going to get attempted by In Your Dream to face this void and the Invoker going, going ahead. And it's up. The white one. The Aegis is going to go down, and the Faceless Boy picks up the Aegis. The Magnus looking quite daunting himself, but he does not have any items to like scale into the late game, other than his BKB. It seems as though the Night Stroker does not want to finish up his solo crest. He is trying to go for his Agon Scepter. Maybe the vision game from the Agon Scepter on the Night Stroker will probably change the turn of the fight. Face the Lloyd completed his Manta Style is going for a Diffusal Blade next. A really good item choice since it does synergize well with the Manta Style, the Kunka has a Zedro Lens and is making most of the plays happen for team in your team. The team is in your team, right? And a Chronosphere onto the puck, but the puck is going to escape the waning rifts. And the Illusory Orb is going to make sure that he is going to survive. He TPs back and he will be safe. The Phantom Assassin, on the other hand, is really... He has enough money for the BKB and he buys that. Hurry the hands of the clock. Double damage! Radiance bottom tower is <laughs> Radiance structures are fortified. They must have Radiance bottom tower is under attack. 
Seems as though the bottom lane is probably going to go down on the side of 65. But a push coming already onto the top lane. The tier 3 is going to get assaulted by the faceless boy. A silence on the faceless boy. But he uses a Lotus Orb and purges off the silence. The elements are pelting Radiant's bottom tower. Dire structures are just magnificently fortified. The Phantom Assassin pushing the bottom lane solo on her own. It does not seem like any hero from. They do not probably want to go for a bottom lane push. The Invoker is going to get X back. And he is going to be perfectly fine. Phantom Assassin is. Going to stick to the bottom lane, she is trying to get a push over there. A fight is probably going to grow in the top Radiant's lane, the butt is going to spot the... out. Faces void, but the static storm is going to catch him out. The silence plus the sunstrike and all the other skills which are totally unneeded to get a kill onto the puck. Meanwhile, on the bottom attack. lane. The tower is looking really low. The Phantom Assassin is doing a number on the bottom lane tower. And is going to go down. Radiant's bottom barracks are under attack. But all is not yet lost. The Phantom Assassin is probably not going to keep me back. She is just going for the barracks, man. A Lotus Orb onto the faceless void. They are looking really low. The Aegis is going to expire and he TPs back. The Phantom Assassin. BKBs and TPs out, and it is going to be a really good exchange. A tier 3 for a tier 3. Gold for my the Clockwork started assaulting the top shrine, but is probably not going to be able to get that structure. Meanwhile, the rotation coming in from Sigma 5. They are probably not going to take a fight anytime soon. They still need to farm up most of their items. The four staff being completed on the Magnus, he is looking really strong. The Puck is also looking really strong. Having completed his Yule Scepter, he has a Dagon queued up in his quick buy. So this is not going to be a really farm heavy right click game. The Puck is probably going to get a kill under the Disruptor quite a few times after he completes his Dagon. But it does not seem like the Radiant side want to kill the space. The Disruptor has a Glimmer Cape, so he'll probably survive the Dagon's Onslaught from the Puck. The Kunka is, is finally going to complete his boost. He only has Face Boots and Etherlands. And meanwhile, the Faceless Void is looking quite strong. He wants to go for a Silver Edge next to counter the Phantom Assassin. Four heroes down the bottom lane trying to get a push. The tier 1 is probably going to go down due to this. The puck pushing into the mid lane. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. The Night Stalker is going to TP to the top lane. The tornado is not going to catch him, but he will be spotted. And the tier 1 is going to go down. The Faceless Boy is tower, going to take that kill. Would have fallen just now. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. The Puck is playing the split push game. The silence onto the illusory orb is not going to deal a lot of damage. The X onto the invoker and he TP to the mid lane, so he will. Okay, the invoker is going to get stuck because the Puck uses a Yules. Well played. Incoming. From Zane Jackie. The X into the torrent is going to miss, but the Puck is trapped up. The EMP and the time dial is for face of spoiler is going to secure the kill onto the Puck. But really well played by the Puck. If the Puck had not done that, it would have probably been the tier 2 going to the side of Team Radiant. Radiant must summon the spirit to defend the top tower. The Phantom Assassin, having completed her BKB, is going for a Skull Basher. A Skull Basher will really help get a few kills. Probably onto the BKB heroes from the side of Team Radiant. Faceless Void probably is not going to pull the BKB though. Middle tower. Radiant's top tower is under attack. And the tier 2 is going to go down. The Faceless Void at spearheading the push. Middle tower has fallen. The Invoker is not yet level 25. Once he gets level 25, the Tornado spam from him will make sure that the Creep Wave will always stay pushed on every lane. The Barrier Assault from the Glockwork is going to spot out. The Phantom Assassin, the Phantom Assassin is going to pop for BKB. 
she blinks in and tries to get a kill on to the disruptor but the disruptor has a glimmer cape and the phantom assassin is getting hopelessly guided around the boat is going to hit and she goes down meatball and the deafening blast is going to secure the kill on the phantom assassin she, who has a buyback the shrine being activated and the nice stalker healing up but it does not seem like the team radiant want to Stop with that, they are going to assault the top shrine and it's probably going to go down. Magnus is teeping into the lane. The silver is from the Magnus. The Magnus is going to pop the BKB and is going to fail the skewer. Oh my god, the face of the BKB man. The face is what is going to get spotted up by the dust. He does not have Lotus Orb to save him from the silence. The Phantom Assassin. The RP onto the face of Spoil and he goes down. The Empire Plus Phantom Assassin doing a lot of damage, getting a kill. The Kunka is going to escape. He is going to build a Heaven's Halberd probably for the Phantom Assassin. Darkness being popped up by the Night Stalker, but it won't be able to help since the Kunka is just going to TP away. A prize. The Rouge is probably going to respawn in a few seconds. The Clockwork spotting it out. The Rouge respawning has been spotted up by the Radiant side. They spot out the Invoker. A stifling dagger onto the Invoker is... Okay, the Invoker just might die right now. But the Duffling Blast into the main pole is going to delay his death probably. Probably he is going to survive. The Phantom Assassin is looking really low. The Sunstrike is going to hit onto the Phantom Assassin. The Phantom Assassin survives and is going to get healed up by the Warlock. A fight still resumes into the top lane. The Static Storm is not going to catch the fuck the fuck because he's her BKB and is going to survive. The Kunka is trying to get a lock onto the puck. The puck is really far away and X Mark would really help. But he does not want to come in for the kill just yet. They do spot out Roshan. X mark onto the puck is probably not going to work. The illusory orb! The puck escapes! Oh my god! The chronosphere not working well for the radiant side. A lot of team fighting abilities from the Radiant side have been used in vain in this few skirmishes that happen. Maybe the Dire side wants to go for a push. The tier 2 is going to get assaulted by the bug. He has to make sure he does not get hooked by the clockwork. A tornado is going to miss onto the clockwork, but the clockwork is... Okay, the clockwork gets a hook onto the puck. The puck is going to get glimpsed back. And the Yule is saving him for the time being. The puck is going to get used as illusory orb and probably not going to survive. The BKB onto the puck is making sure he stays alive. The veil onto the team. The rock being dropped on three heroes. But it does not seem like the damage is going to be enough. The Night Stalker is the first to drop. Back so soon. The Phantom Assassin is probably soon to follow. The Phantom Assassin is still not going to get hit. The Sun Strike onto the Warlock. The Warlock is going to go down. The face of point is going to secure that kill. The Phantom Assassin is going to survive. The Magnus being spotted up by the Faceless Void. The Faceless Void wants to go for a kill onto the Pug. But the Pug is too far. He is too safe on his own side. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. And the Radiance Middle Tower is going to get assaulted by the Golem from the Warlock. But it does not seem like Radiance the Radiance want to give a shit attack. about that. They want to take Roshan, they want to take the Sages, and they want to take a fight. And they are probably going to win that if the Chronosphere lands properly. The Puck's Illusory Orb is going to scout out the Rosh attempt. The Puck is probably not going to go for an Aegis Steel or a cheeky play like that. The Aegis is going to fall down and the, and the Faceless Void is going to pick that up. The Faceless Void being invis from the Shadow Blade is trying to look for a pick up. A free Chronosphere kill maybe onto the Puck but the Puck is nowhere to be found. He is down at the bottom lane. He's probably going to push that out. 
All the heroes from Sigma 5 have oh, respawned. This is a good time to take a fight. A gift from the Tempest of Battle. The Invoker is trying to get the Shrine, and he will probably be able to do that once he uses his Port Spirit. He is not going to use that 4 seconds, 2 seconds. Okay, he will not be he will not need to use his fourth spirit. Four spirits are going to push down the mid lane. The bottom lane is getting pushed by the puck. The puck does puck out the clockwork. The clockwork does not know that the puck is still there, but a rotation coming into the bottom lane. The night stalker and the puck. Probably they want to go for a kill out of the clockwork, but they do not know that the disruptor just arrived with the glimmer cape. He spots out the puck. The puck is probably going to survive. And the puck onto the but the puck is trapped right now. The battery assault is not going to work. The puck is going to use himself, but a static storm into the kinetic field is going to make sure he is not going to go down that easily. The puck will blink up and he will not survive that. The Duffling Blast, the AoE Duffling Blast, casting him out. The puck is dead for 80 seconds. Maybe they will not have buyback. Okay, the puck does have buyback, the clockwork does, but neither. Nobody else has buyback. The Night Stalker does not have buyback. A push coming on onto the mid lane. The tornado being used. But an RP onto the Invoker. The Invoker is getting really low. The Chrono on the two. Okay. The Invoker is probably not going to die for now. The Rock coming out. The Chase being eaten by the Invoker. The Invoker is going to survive for now. He is BKB. The Skewer is not going to connect onto him. And Invoker is gone like getting a kill onto the Phantom Assassin. The Phantom Assassin does not have buyback. If the Radiant Science win this, it is GG. They are going to get one free lane of barracks with this fight. The barracks are getting assaulted by the Faceless Void. The Puck will not be able to do much. The Silence and Illusory or Staff will not be able to do a lot in this fight. The Faceless Void still has his Aegis. So he, he is looking really strong. The barracks are probably going to go down. The Storm has spoken. And they do. The Dreamfall is not connecting onto anyone. Zane Jackie won. is making a lot of bad plays right here. The top barracks are also going to go down. The Faceless Void is fallen. doing a real work on to Sigma 5. <laughs> Let's be serious. Dyer's top barracks are <laughs> under attack. The Faceless Void does not have Chronosphere for 40 more seconds. And he uses a Diffusal Blade onto the Night Stalker. The Night Stalker is going to get next and torrented. But the puck is going to go down. He does not have buyback. It is only two versus five. The Night Stalker is probably also going to drop down. The kinetic field and the X is going to make sure that they secure the kill onto him. The Warlock is also going to get cut on. And that is a full team wipe. Nobody from Sigma 5 is alive. And GG is going to get called. And the winner of this Aces ROG Chennai qualifiers is going to be. What a the Radiant side, I'm so sorry, I'm a really bad caster. I Can Only Dream is going to be the victor for Aces ROG Chennai Online Qualifier. Offline Qualifiers, I'm sorry. And with that, the stream is going to end. And this is me, Old Bear, also known as Siddharth Prashant. And please tune in to playtomia.tv so you can get a lot. So you can get a lot more Dota 2 and CSGO content. And with that, I'm out.